we often think of the Buddha's teachings on karma as having very little to do with our meditation. But actually, they're the most basic principle that we're working with. On the one hand, he's teaching us that not everything is predetermined. And our happiness and our unhappiness are dependent on our own actions. And this is why we're meditating. We've got to do it. It's something we have to do. Because we can't expect awakening just to come down and hit us on the head or appear out of nowhere with no, no work on our parts. And it's not foreordained that it's going to happen to us, so we have to make an effort. Those are general principles that we're working with. More specifically, though, when the Buddha said that our experience of the present moment is made up of three things. Results of past actions, present actions, and then the results of present actions. It's important to keep this framework in mind because it helps sort out a lot of the problems that come up in the meditation. Say you're sitting here and your mind just will not settle down. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of activity, a lot of excess frenetic energy. Here the question is, is that the result of past action or is it the result of present action? And so you check, see, well, what are you doing? And the things that come floating into your mind, those are the results of past action. It's your reaction to them, whether you encourage them or discourage them or just simply watch them. That's your present action. You can't do much about the past, because sometimes the things coming in from the past are pretty strong, and the best you can do is just sit with them. not get involved. Other times you can actively take them apart so that they no longer bother you. Or if they're good results from past actions, okay, you encourage them. You know, a good mood that comes along, okay, you can use that to strengthen your mindfulness, strengthen your concentration, if you're skillful. The problem is we tend to get too wound up in the past. Our narratives of the past tend to take over our meditation, especially if the narratives are, are disjointed. If there's a lot that we have to excuse ourselves or make excuses for, and we spend all our time sitting here trying to re recast the past in terms that we can feel more comfortable about. And as a result, we don't pay much attention to the present moment. We don't pay much attention to what we're doing in the present moment. And so we're missing a good opportunity to create a good past for our future. In other words, what you do right now is at some point going to be the past action influencing the future. So you should ask yourself, okay, the past is past. There's not much you can do about it. Whether with whether you handled it well or handled it poorly, that's not the issue. The issue is, what are you doing right now? That means learning to let go of an awful lot. A lot of us don't like to look like have mistakes in the past. We get all wound up about those. But as the Buddha said, if you get all wound up in remorse, okay, that's going to get in the way of your being skillful in the present moment. So it's best to admit a mistake in the past simply as a mistake in the past, and focus on what you're doing right now. This principle is so basic, you, you have to underline it, because we tend to forget it. It applies not only to your meditation, but to your life in general. If you find your narrative of the past has a lot of sticky issues, okay, the question is, okay, what kind of narrative are you creating right now? Because again, some point in the future you'll be looking back on this point as part of the past. So this is one of the reasons why the Buddha teaches the precepts. At the very least, you don't make those big errors that come when you break the precepts, when you actually 
harm yourself or harm other people. This way, the, the way you live will then have a good impact on your meditation. Because you sit down to meditate, and the kind of issues that come with breaking the precepts just do not appear in your mind. The mind is a lot clearer. There's a lot less that you have to think about in the past, or a lot less that you have to let go of. And you find it easier to settle down. So this is why we're focusing so much on the present moment, not simply to experience the present moment as an end in and of itself. After all, the present moment is the path. It's not the goal. And part of the path is, well, seeing what's going on in the present moment. You're a lot less passive participant in the present than you think. You're much more active. And there are intentions that you make to experience space and time. They're so basic and so lie into so many layers that you don't even know they're there. But one of the things we're doing in the meditation is to dig down and find all these intentions that are shaping the present. Learn to handle them more and more and more skillfully. So that no matter what's happening in the present, you can approach it in a skillful way. If the past sends good things your way, okay, you don't just get carried away and heedless. If it sends bad things your way, okay, you don't get upset. You don't throw away the practice. You don't throw away your mindfulness. You give up. You keep these tools handy at all times. And that way you can dig down through these layers in the present moment and finally get to the point where there are no more layers. That's the important point in the meditation. Use the principle of karma in creating good karma right now through the meditate, mindfulness, concentration, discernment. It gets more and more skillful. And then it becomes the kind of karma that brings karma to an end. It's only when you reach that point that, that you've come to the end of the problem. But you can't reach that point without really understanding what you're doing right now. So pay a lot of attention right here, and be very clear about, okay, what's coming in from the past, what's coming from the present? And if what's coming in the present is not skillful, okay, what can you do to make it more skillful? And when you seem to be doing it as best you can right now, and there's still some problem, okay, well, why are you letting yourself get upset about stuff that's coming in from the past? Got to sit with it. How can you sit with it without getting affected by it? That's an important lesson. That's an important skill. But it is a skill that can be mastered. You've got all the basics right here, focusing on the breath, being sensitive to the breath, learning to adjust the breath. That develops your sensitivity to cause and effect right here and now. Then you just pursue that issue deeper and deeper and deeper into the mind. until you get to the point where all things open up. So this simple principle of karma is something really basic to what we're doing. If you look at the meditation through the lens of the Buddhist teachings on karma, you find it makes a lot more sense. It also helps you keep things in perspective as they arise.